So I've got the great pleasure today to interview Guy Kawasaki, um, ex-chief evangelist from Apple, but now a celebrated author with over 10 titles to his name. Um, Guy, actually... Sorry, oh, again. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. really you drink okay. too. That's fine, we're really yeah. um, Having read In Chapman, um, one of the big things that struck out at me is it actually reminded me very much of How to Make Friends and Influence People by yeah. Dale Carnegie, one of the first books I read, along with Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Yeah. Uh, really, um, what were the books that influenced you and, and really was your intention to, well, to write something for a modern context? For this specific book, definitely How to Win Friends and Influence People in, uh, Influence Me. No, oh, that's that's interesting. So uh, yes, um, Robert Cialdini's influence and Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People both influenced me for this book. However, that said, probably the most influential book in my life in general is a book called If You Want to Write by a woman named Brenda Uland, U E L A N D, of the University of Minnesota, and this was about expressing your creativity, whether it's writing or programming or marketing, whatever you do. Um, that is the book that I would recommend to everybody. Um, well, you took an interesting modern slant with Enchantment. I, I, I really yeah. liked the fact you had a section on swearing. What was well, your, okay, your thinking about uh, swearing? Yeah. I think that in a very specific set of conditions, swearing can be very enchanting. Now, um, with all due respect to my buddy Gary Vaynerchuk, <laughs> I don't think you should swear every other word, <laughs> okay? Uh, I think that if you use swearing very rarely in the context of speaking to people who are neutral or positively inclined to you, so you can't do it when everybody's against you, in a rare circumstance when it is so obvious that someone or some entity is trying to bullshit you, to use my excuse for swearing, that it's so head-slappingly stupid, insulting to you. Everybody in the audience is thinking, this guy is full of crap. This guy is arrogant. This guy is taking advantage. This guy is just going beyond Thunderdome. It's okay to swear. Because I, I think it's very enchanting because you have to say that the person who swore told it like it is. Um, so I'm not generally recommending that you swear, but I'm telling you that in those kind of circumstances, it's okay. So it's good to have impact, but not to do it excessively. Well, honest. because if you do it excessively, you won't have impact. Okay. Uh, if you're known as a profane speaker, I don't think it helps at all. Uh, I think it gets in the way of the message. So if in doubt, don't swear. Uh, but you know, under those circumstances, it can work. So you mentioned earlier on about uh, how it's good to piss people off on Twitter every day, but I presume what you really mean is it's good to be disruptive and to provoke controversy. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's not, a, it's more subtle than that. So I think if you are true to your, your philosophy, your value, whatever, you will piss off people on Twitter. That's very different than saying, okay, here's the plan, guys. We're going to purposely piss off these people on Twitter. We're going to be controversial so that... I don't know, you get retweeted so you get more followers, so you get whatever. I mean, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying be true to yourself. Now, yourself could be an asshole, don't get me wrong. I'm saying be true to yourself um, and let the chips fall where they may, uh, which is very different than I'm... Let, let's say you, if you were fundamentally just a really pure, good person, not a mean bone in your body. I'd say Robert Scoble was like that, okay? But if, so Robert Scoble sat down one day and said, for now I'm gonna be mean and I'm gonna swear because that'll make me more controversial, more visible and better for my brand. I don't think he should do that. It's not authentic. It's not authentic. And on the other hand, you know, if Gary Vee sat down one day and said, I'm not gonna swear anymore. <laughs> it's just as not authentic, right? He is what he is. Both of those guys are what they are. So I'm just saying, you know, you should be what you are. now. Having said that, you, you know, you may not be perfect as what you are, so I'm not saying you shouldn't fix or improve yourself, but I don't think you should come up with this devious plan that if you're not swearing, all of a sudden you're going to swear because you read in my book that, you know, swearing once in a while is okay. You should be what you are. Um, that's enchanting. Great <laughs> stuff. Thanks. With uh, all of the different balls that you juggle in the air, so your business, your 
your family mm -hmm. life, the father, husband, the hockey addiction. How yeah. do you get work-life balance? That I am willing to grind it out. I'm beyond willing. I enjoy grinding it out. So uh, I have four children and a wife. You know, first wife, wife 1.0. And uh, a lot of it is because of the goodness of my wife. Uh, we also have a babysitter, <laughs> which is, you know, a real benefit. We have a live-in babysitter, so that helps. Don't get me wrong. So it's those kind of things. Uh, I do travel a fair amount. But when I travel, when I'm not traveling, I am at home. I don't even go into the office. And so when I am at home, I take the kids to school. You know, I come back and I work at home. Uh, I pick the kids up. You know, I do that kind of stuff. Because when I'm home, I'm home. So... Uh, so how, how involved are you um, day to day with Garage? Uh, not much. You know, we're trying to raise another fund right now. So uh, I'm not particularly involved in that process. Uh, so I'm primarily an author and speaker right now. And I do a lot of advising to companies and, uh, you know, a parent. <laughs> so so I asked earlier on about the books that had influenced. Um, I, I noticed on the testimonials for Enchantment yeah. that uh, you had uh, teasingly um, Phil Zambardo uh, comment how he taught, taught you well. Yes, he was um, my psychology professor at Stanford. Stanford. So uh, who else has been, as an individual, who else has been influential for you? Uh, probably my first real boss in life, a guy named Marty Gruber. I was in Los Angeles, I was working for a jewelry manufacturer, and uh, literally I was counting diamonds. And so I went from counting diamonds to become vice president of sales and marketing for the organization. And in the jewelry business, I truly learned how to sell. And that skill has been very, very useful the entire rest of my life. This was. 1979 or so is when I learned how to sell in the jewelry business. And the jewelry business is tougher than the technology business. And uh, it, it was a very useful upbringing. So now, you know, a lot of people ask me, so, you know, what's a great training and preparation for life? And I think at the end of the day, there's only two functions that really matter. You have to make something and you have to sell it. And if you're not making it or selling it, you're wasting your time. So, uh, my advice, you know, if, 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 you're tech, if you're technical, learn how to make stuff. Learn how to program software. If you're not technical and you really want to prepare for a life in entrepreneurship, you have to learn how to sell. So, you know, go work for Procter & Gamble and learn how to sell detergent because it will help you sell anything else the rest of your life.